You're listening to Creek Peaks Podcast. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash cheapgeek. So it begins again. Welcome back to Creek Geeks Podcast. This is episode number 165. Yes. So, anyway, here we go. We're going to jump right into the podcast. This is the Creep Geeks Podcast. We uh, normally like to do podcasts you know, at least once a week, but we've had a little bit of a run-in with some bad luck, as the title has said. So we are currently recording this podcast, both in video and audio, from an undisclosed hospital bed location in Western North Carolina. So I'm your host, Greg, and this is the Creep Geeks Podcast. And for your very first time tuning in, or if this is your very first time tuning in, um, this is an unusual circumstance for us, but we'll give you an idea where you can hear our podcast. You can hear our podcast on iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Pandora, all the major players, Google Play Music, Apple Apple Podcasts of Destruction, Pretty much anywhere you can hear a podcast, you can hear us. And we also have a Facebook account where you can watch and participate, and that is called Creep Geeks Podcast. Creep Geeks Podcast. And we have an Instagram account called Creep Geeks Pod, and basically we have a website called creepgeeks.com where you can go and check out some of our wonderful stuff that we share and contribute to the podcast by basically, if you'd like, using a phone number that we will provide for you. Yes, and you can, if you have a story to share or something you'd like us to research or something you'd like us to talk about, you can share it there, but pretty much that's about it. Yeah, so we're all over the place, have lots of social media stuff, so we're going to get right into the podcast so we don't anger somebody by spending more than two minutes talking about how you can support us. And you know who you are, and you're out there, and basically at the end of the day, it is what it is. So, I'm Greg, and this is the bear that you can't see at all in my neck hole. Because just in case, if you can see, I have a sweet, sweet Ethiopian brass extension Taiwanese National Geographic thing where you could like add the brass rings and make your neck longer. No. Yep. That's not what that is. Yeah. Well, anyway, the reason why I'm wearing such this, this wonderful get up here with a microphone pointed at my stupid face, headphones, and this neck braces is because uh, me not being a sports ball guy... And more of a camper van guy, more of a paranormal researcher, investigator, kind of paranormal podcast guy, decided to go out and uh, break my neck right before we were supposed to go do some stuff. Yes, but before we get into that, we usually start the podcast off with some sort of random, interesting factoid. So, oh, yes. My notes are so small today. You can drag to make more. Uh, yeah, 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 I know I can. I'm not. I'm officially disabled. I'm not. I'm, I'm not tech dumb, though. Okay. Today's interesting random factoid is: Did you know we have the same amount of vertebrae as a giraffe? That's not true. Yes, it is. Because this is from Canada. It's just a website about spine facts. Oh. Yes. Well, how many random, sp- how many um, spinal cord vertebrates does a g- giraffe have? Oh, seven vertebrae. Seven. Yeah. 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 Here's an interesting random factoid. Do you know I'm made out of titanium and cadaver bone? Yes, we are going to get into that later. All right. But this little link that we've included in the podcast notes, which will provide what's this pod, uh, podcast when it gets published, has all sorts of like interesting spine and neck trivia, things like that. You're taller in the morning than you are at night, which I've known that one. Um, especially when you get older, uh, you start off with your 
spine fully elongated and then as the day Well, don't look at me. Look at the microphone. I know. But it's cuz I can't have an elongated thing right now. Anyways, uh, your spine does get or more compressed as the day progresses. That's because the world beats you down. <laughs> That's what that is. <laughs> as the as the world beats you down during the day, yes, you, get <laughs> you get shorter. And then when you go to sleep at night, your your spine uh, decompresses. You end up waking up taller in the morning. That kind of that whole process, that healing process, though, slows down as you get older. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then there's a very interesting one, which we'll talk about later, which is smoking is bad for the spine and for healing. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> Well, being as we're in our, our secret, undisclosed hospital location studio, I can turn lights on. Oh, look at that. Nice. Yeah. Okay. But that's your interesting ring of factors. So spines, or spines. So giraffe have how many vertebrae? Seven? Seven. Just like us. Nice. Yeah. Just like some of us. <laughs> Stop it. are going to have a little fun with it. Okay, all kidding aside, um, as we move into the podcast and talk a little bit more seriously, uh, what? Nothing. You giving me the side eye? No, I was just looking at you. Okay. So I'm in this hospital bed because uh, I decided to go out and break my neck. Yes. Yeah. So we have a camper van. We talk about our DOI camper van, the, the Pro Master, our Ram Pro Master camper van of destruction. The Albino Rhino has roof racks on top, and I was taking the roof racks off so we can install 300 watts of glorious solar. Yes. So we could have solar energy for things like flat irons and stuff like that as we travel. Because if you don't know, we like to travel, and we we travel to interesting places, and we've been making videos and things like that for our podcast, because primarily, not only do we do a podcast, but we also investigate the stories that we try to talk about as best we can, and this year, 2020, we had big plans to go out and hit a lot of those places that sort of coincide with events and conventions that we were going to be going to and conferences, so we need to have that solar ready. So it was a nice day. It was Super Bowl Sunday. And like I said earlier, I'm not a sports ball guy. So I decided to get the old stepladder out and get up there and take off some of the solar panels. Now I should back up and say, I originally said, I'm just going to go take a shower. And I'm going to wait to do this till tomorrow when it's warmer. Yeah. And Omi and my brother can help me. Yes, but I didn't. So I got up there. What were you doing? I was over an hour way doing a photo shoot for a client yes in a place i'm totally unfamiliar with yes on a slippery waterfall so nice yeah so if it sounds like i'm yelling in a microphone or if the audio is not quite as good as it could be well we apologize this is a completely mobile setup and we really are in a in a uh, hotel in a hospital room um recording stuff so okay so anyway i got up there and as i was taking the last piece of the roof rack off and setting it to the side and I was all the way at the very top of the van which is about almost nine feet tall the ladder somehow or another got kicked out and I remember seeing both my feet in the air as I was looking at them and I remember going what the hell no it was just me I had the dog tied our dog Pepper, Paranormal Pepper, tied to uh, the front steps because I didn't want her to be out there when I was taking the roof racks off because I didn't want her to get hurt. Yeah. So, yeah, so the ladder kicked out and I came crashing down directly on my tailbone and sort of T-boned myself underneath the van, basically. So I fell down the side of the van, um, bouncing my head along the side. I hit on my tailbone and it sort of bent me like a taco, if you will, and pushed me under the van, and it hurt real bad. Yeah. But I didn't lose consciousness, but I remember hitting, and when I hit, it was like lightning bolts just shot through my arms, like if I was being electrocuted. So that wasn't good. How did you know your neck was broke? No. All I knew is it was a pretty bad crash because I flipped off one of my shoes. And as we all know, growing up in the 80s, if you grew up in that time frame, even in the 90s, it's probably a universal thing. If you ever have a wreck, you know, like a bike wreck or something like that when you're a kid and your shoe flies off, it's pretty serious business. (laughs) So anyway, I flipped off one of my shoes and I just remember my hands just like being on fire with these lightning bolts. And uh, as I tried to sit up and get my shoe back on, 
my brother and my sister-in-law pulled up and they were like, what are you doing? And I couldn't barely breathe because I knocked the wind out of me, landed on my tailbone, electrocuted myself all at the same time. Yeah. And what I realized was, is that my head was super floppy. Oh. And I was like, huh. So I decided to go ahead and hold my chin and I was sitting up in a sitting up position, leaning against the van as best I could. Yeah. And and they were like, what are you doing? Why are you? And I couldn't breathe. And I'm like, just give me a second. So yeah. and the second basically turned into about 10 minutes. And then I figured, okay, well, since I'm holding my head and everything is okay, like, you know, as far as like me holding my head's okay, but my arms and I thought I dislocated my shoulder is really what I thought I did. And so, uh, right then, I decided I needed to take three leaves. You know, the naproxen, sodium, because yeah. anti- that'll fix everything, right? That everything. That's my go-to. Some people yeah. use uh, Vicks VapoRub. <laughs> Mine are leaves. So, um, yeah, pretty much after about 20 minutes, and then my dad coming outside, and my brother, you know, they helped me get into a chair. And um, they, were, they were kind enough to retrieve a couch cushion, okay. like a couch pillow, off mom's couch, and I folded it like a taco and stuck it up underneath my chin so I could hug it and hold my head up yeah. and take three leaves and wait for the pain to go away. Yeah. Joke's on me. It did not go away. So, but my head was really floppy. Like, I could move it around. It was like, wow. You do realize every time you moved it, you were actually putting more pressure on your spinal cord? Was I? Nobody knows for sure, and I didn't move it that much. I don't think so. so. It's hard to say. No, they're just guessing because it's hard to say. Was me moving around my head causing that pressure or was it the fact that I fell about 10 feet, almost 11 feet straight on my tail? Yes, the way they explained it, the more you move that head, your C6 and C7 were applying direct pressure. Those are vertebrates, by the way, for us. This onto your spinal cord. Well, nobody can see you doing like this. So, So, making a triangle shape. Yeah. So, anyway... I broke my neck. I broke the hell out of my neck. Yeah. So everybody's got how many vertebrae again? Uh, seven. So yeah, I broke mine. So I had like eight. <laughs> I guess. That's how you look at it. You are half right. Because With, what happened was you snapped your C7 completely. Like a twig. But your C6, the ligaments around it were torn. Yes. So were the C6, not the C7 or something like that? It was like... I'm, I am just as foggy minded about this whole thing because so much information was being thrown at me and your sister in law about this whole thing. Not at the, office, the doctor's office or the emergency room. Um, the way they explained it was there was a lot of damage to the C6 as well. Yeah, so I grabbed the old couch pillow, piled up in dad's super sweet new car, yeah. and took about a 25 mile ride to the hospital because yeah. we live out in the middle of nowhere. And then we get to the hospital, and they, they strap this super sweet uh, neck brace thing, kind of like what I'm wearing now, on me, and basically said, uh, we, do, we, need a neuro- we need a neurology team, and we don't have one. So you need to go to another hospital. I didn't call you at all, because I was too busy holding my floppy neck up with the pillow, but my brother was sending you amazing text messages like, he think he broke his neck. He's going to the hospital. I don't. I don't know. Okay, because at that point, my whole my whole goal was just to get to the hospital. Okay. So and I knew I was going to be in a hospital, so I wanted to go ahead and smoke a couple of cigarettes, <laughs> just because. My side of the story is I got done with a photo shoot that was about an hour and a half long, and my client wanted to have tea with uh, some family and friends. And as they're making tea and settling down for the late afternoon, all of a sudden, all these text messages came in because I was so far out there, I didn't have signal. And these are text messages from your brother, from your sister, from your you know, sister-in-law. And it was, um, Greg thinks he broke his neck. Yep. And then we're, at, we're on our way to the hospital. He's okay. And I'm like, what in the world? Yes. And then there was a bunch of missed calls. And I was like, what in the world was happening? My client actually had to drive all the way back out of civilization. At that point, I was able to Did she go fast? Yes, she did. <laughs> she was Sweet. 
I will thank her when I see her. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, she went very fast for the Olympics. Sweet. Yeah. Um, got me to civilization. Uh, told me to take care of myself and like, give her some updates, which was funny because sadly, I didn't give your dad or her updates until we were way into the situation. Well. Um, but I'm on my way because they're already at the hospital and it the whole time. I'm not a very good driver and I had to like not let it cross a few mountains to get here. Nice. So, but yeah, I had really not enough information about how bad you were. So, Me either. Yeah. Yeah, so I got to go to get an MRI and they realized that I was too big in the shoulders because I'm a big burly man. And so they took me to another hospital. So now we're at third hospital where they finally got me into the MRI tube. And I remember being pretty uncomfortable. And them telling me, you need to be really still being really mean, actually. Kind of nasty to me saying things like, if you don't get this done or if you don't hold still, we're not going to be able to do this. And, and the, the lady doing it, bless her heart, was a real a-hole. No, she was. And I told her, I said, if I could do this, I would do this, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, after I laid there for a minute, I think I may have kind of passed out for a minute. I'm not for sure. But anyway, yeah. after um, being in the MRI tube and them sliding me out, they were all really nice to me. Yeah. Well, I will say, your EMTs that you transport... Oh, the EMTs were freaking awesome. Always, they went the extra mile. In fact, when you did pass out, one of those nice stuff wake you up. So they did an amazing job. Yeah, because I, I don't remember them leaving, actually. Nope. he stood by you. So I need to tell that guy, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, um, I do know that somebody said morphine, give him some morphine. Yeah. I don't know when that happened, but that <laughs> I got to tell you, man, if you ever break your neck, get the good stuff. Um, so. Actually, it was, it was one of the triage people that recommended it, and... They could recommend it for somebody because I think one of the EMTs that I'm not sure about. Ah. But, um, yeah. He was a cool cat. He's ex-military like me. Yeah. So I think once they realized how broke my neck really was, they were like, oh, uh, we got stuff to do. It took forever for this. The whole time, me and my sister-in-law, who stood by my side this whole thing, and my brother-in-law. Yep. You know, she's trying to explain things because at one point when they were telling me, it was like they were speaking in another language to me. And I was just what were they saying? They were, we're doing a podcast. You can throw out details. Well, you know, just like, if you remember them, because I don't remember a whole lot. They were trying to explain how we have no available neuro team. This requires, um, you know, like things like an MRI. I'm like, you don't have an MRI. They're like, we do. It's just not open on the weekends. Like, oh, yeah. But is this an emergency room? You know, and I'm yeah. just, so we're going to have to. Put him on an ambulance, and I'm panicking because, you know, are you going to have to go on the ambulance by yourself? You, at that point, you were kind of, like, I really don't want somebody to, like, I don't want to be in an ambulance but all by myself with a bunch of people I don't know. So, Freaking strangers. <laughs> basically. And, um, and, you know, so I started to panic, and Stephanie started making some decisions for me, which is good. Um, but, yeah. So, anyway. Yeah. Got the MRI, went in there. The doctor explained that if I didn't get the surgery done, it would be very bad, and death and all this other crazy stuff. And, and so, the way in which his C7 completely snapped and the damage to the C6, um, there was no way he would be able to um, survive without having surgery immediately. And that was explained to us around 2 a.m. Yeah, and this whole thing happened at like 2.30 in the afternoon. Yeah. So, so we're like... Oh, fun fact, I still have no idea who won the Super Bowl. <laughs> Even more fun fact, I'm not a sports ball guy, I have no idea who was actually playing in the Super Bowl. Oh, gosh. So... Well, I'm just going to leave that a mystery. You, if you're listening or watching, you can let us know in the comments. Yeah, or, I could probably look it up, but I don't yeah. care, but that's okay. But, yeah, around... Two forty, the neurosurgeon team, well, some of the people from the neurosurgeon team came in and explained the severity of his injury to us. And he did show us some pictures of the MRI and he did show us your x rays from the first hospital. And they showed how, compared to the x rays and the MRI, how 
how much change had happened just from a very little movement or with the brakes. So the more stuff that kept moving around and the longer they waited, the more pressure was being applied to your spinal cord. So they needed the surgery. And because you, you had been given some medication to calm you down and to ease the pain, I basically had to sign. And I verbally asked you, Craig, you need this surgery. And it's definitely think you should have this surgery. You didn't want this surgery. And you had this. You, it took you a moment. And? Yeah. You know, well, if you think I really need it. Hey. So that got done on three. And then they have to prep you for surgery. And it's amazing with some of the stuff that they do when they have to prep you for surgery. This is the stuff that is kind of like TV where they cut your pants off and rip your shoes off and stuff like that. Yeah. And all of a sudden they start trying to just IVs all over the place. That's the stuff that, you know, when you watch TV and movies are pretty accurate, you know. Um, and it's because they don't want to destabilize the patient by moving the you know. So... They got all that done, put him in a lovely hospital gown. And I think I still have it. Yes. It's very nice. And then, basically, while he was in the gown, getting prepped for the surgery, by now it's about 4.30, um, they started explaining details about the surgery, how um, even with the surgery, there was a risk for paralysis. Um, the surgery may take anywhere from six to eight hours. Um, it may be a few days before you wake up. And the one sentence that went about to me was, do not be surprised if he wakes up with some deficiencies, some significant deficiencies. And yes. I just flipped out because I'm like, what does that mean? And Stephanie was trying to tell me, you know, like, he might not be able to walk. He may not be able to move. Deficiencies mean things like paralysis and all that other stuff. Um, and since it's the spine, you never really know what those consequences may be. So, at that point, I'm flipping out. You're not really flipping out. Because they've just started putting you to all sorts of anesthesia. Yeah, well, looking back on this, you know, as we kind of move into it, yeah. um, even without the morphine and everything, I was super calm the whole time. So, I had, for some reason, I had very little worries. The only worry I actually remember having was, is that I knew it was going to be pretty serious, was that if I didn't make it through the surgery, I wanted everybody to know that I loved them. That was it. You know, that I cared about them and that even if I knew you, and you didn't think that I cared. I did. I just want everybody to know that. And that way, so if something didn't happen, at least then that would be no. Yeah. That's all I wanted. That was it. As, as they started to give them drugs, that became more and more apparent. But the way, because you're starting to get really weak at that point. So the way you were vocalizing it, it made me especially very scared. So, you know, they were telling us to call your dad. Was I like the Godfather? No. Please. Weaker. Tell everybody I love them. Well, you know, the box and the nurses and surgeons are like, call his dad, call his, his daughters, call people. And um, we spoke to everybody for a moment. Uh, we were trying to wait for um, somebody to call. That got taken care of pretty quick. And then they took you away. And as they were taking you away, you were trying to talk. You're trying to say something to your brother, and um, you couldn't get it out. Mm. Um, so instead, you just said, I love you. So, there you go. Yeah. And um, at that point, you know, um, it's not me and your brother. They tried to put some food in me because I realized, so you hadn't eaten all day. No. Nope. They tried to put some food in me. Food, they just wanted to make up a coffee or something. They drove around trying to find me coffee and trying to find me some more weed. <laughs> so, which we left at your dad's house, apparently. Yeah. You know? And um, during that time, there were people that you wanted to say who called and asked to, you know, get status up in the country. Um, which I forgot to tell you about. What? 
You had other family members check in when this was happening. Who? Um, family members like Scott and Missy and people, they hmm. were very concerned. Um, and Stephanie handled it like a champ. Very nice. She is, you know. Um, 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 so it took some time. They managed to put a little bit of food in me, got coffee, got some leave. And by then, about two hours had passed. Yeah, two hours and ten minutes. And then finally, we got a phone call saying they had flipped you over. They hadn't started surgery, but they had fl- finally flipped you over to start the surgery. So it took two hours to flip you over onto your stomach so that they could work on your neck. And the reason was is apparently every, they had the whole team slowly moving you, and they may have been doing x-rays to make sure nothing else shifted. Sweet. So then the rest of the surgery took five and a half hours. Where they rebuilt me. Yes. And we well. have titanium. Oh, yes, yeah, so evidently, I don't, I haven't seen the picture since then because they gave us a super sweet CD-ROM full of pictures <laughs> in our laptops. We removed the CD-ROMs to put SSD drives in them. So anyway, yeah. I guess they have titanium pieces and parts and screws and rods and junk so, yeah. and uh, fused spinal vertebrates. It was vertebrae? No, it's fused. And I have some cadaver bone, bone yeah. in me. Was, so, was my new gaming name is going to be Titanium Cadaver Bone Man. <laughs> so, don't take that. Yeah. If you're going to sign in, so. That may explain that you would now have two titanium plates. Yeah. And then bolts. So, yeah. Very nice. And the cadaver bone on my body so. Yeah. Anyway, kind of a weird thing. Yeah. Broke my neck. Woke up on Wednesday, kind of. This happened on Sunday. Didn't really know what was going on. So, I don't know. It was kind of a strange thing. Went through the long process of uh, being super thirsty. All I wanted was a freaking ice cube, man, and they would not give me one. Because I know I wasn't able to drink. Because they told me you can't drink because you've got tubes all in you. But I was just so dry. My throat, I was so parched. When he got out of surgery, he was on a breathing tube, which... If you've never seen somebody on a breathing tube, they kind of really take you aback um, because you're not used to seeing somebody else not breathing on their own. And then I stayed with you for all of that, where it was basically um, you breathing on the tube. They would come in every few hours. They would lower your sedation. And then try to get you to do something called responsiveness to us where they demand that you grab their hand. I don't need people telling me what to do. Hold their finger, pick your feet, lift your leg up. And um, for the first couple, they were really concerned. But it turns out his, his responses were good. It was just when he was waking up, he was waking up going, Oh my God, I've got a brain into where are my family? You know, hmm. so he, he, being the ordinary porcupine he is, he's not going to do a response in this house. He has no idea what's going on. Yes. Yeah. What do you do? I don't know. You tell me. You may have tried to flip off a nurse. <laughs> yes, so some people that uh, helped save my life may have been shown my gratitude by middle fingers. <laughs> middle finger guns for everybody. <laughs> Because you were weak and a little bit sedated, it came out wrong. <laughs> Wait, why are you pimping me out, man? I'm not. See, so Santa. <laughs> there was one successful flipping of the bird, though. Very nice. So, eventually, I think he figured out you have to do these tests. And I believe it's because a certain nurse got like this and said, if you do not respond to these tests, I'm not taking my breathing tube out. Uh, so, yeah. Joke's on her. Well, yes. Yes. So that was loads of fun. So anyway, broke my neck, woke up on Wednesday, wound up getting out of there, got transferred to our secret undisclosed location. My fingers work, my toes work, my legs work, everything works. My hands are still kind of numb. 
my arms are kind of numb. I have a lovely 18 inch zipper down my neck at 42 staples, which is the number of human chromosomes in the body. Really? I think so. Okay. Pretty sure. <laughs> if I'm not, you can correct us below. Uh, pretty weak overall, but I'm not paralyzed and kind of is what it is. So here we are. So I have a long road to recover, which will go a lot faster because I am secretly badass and did not die. Probably should have, but that's okay. But we were looking at, you know, aside from being in the position we're in, which is a terrible position to be in for anybody, what may have caused this? Because we just had continual run of bad luck in those past three days and a couple of days after this whole thing, and we could not figure out what was going on. I was like, what the hell happened? Yeah. So we have a theory. Don't know if it's a real theory or not. Can't put our finger on anything else but this one sort of thing. And that's what we're going to talk about right now, because it's not our goal to bore you with or try to garner any kind of sympathy for me or anything like that. Other than I do want to say the people that saved my life, I very much appreciate it. All my friends and family that were hooking us up with prayers and good thoughts and... Yep, and the, the secret Reiki masters out there actually performing Reiki, which we'll talk about that in another podcast because I believe in that stuff now because I've seen it. It's kind of crazy. Um, so a while ago, we bought some possibly haunted items. Yeah, because we thought it would be cool. Well, I thought it would be cool. Well, we thought, thought it would be neat. Yeah. And, we didn't and they didn't really feel haunted. Yeah. They didn't feel... A little weird, although I will admit I was drawn to one particular thing out of a box of 300 of these things, and that's the one we got, and what did we get? What did we actually buy? We bought a jailer's key ring, an yes. jailer's key ring. Probably from the 1800s, honestly. It's yeah. pretty old. And we bought, technically we bought four skeleton keys. Yes. Two of them I knew were either reproduction, and the other was just a jewelry box key. Yeah. And they were just... Oh, look, I can use these to make goth jewelry because, you know, for 20 yeah. years, we're going to start doing more paranormal conferences. So those two, nothing. But the other two, that looked like jail keys on those, or some sort of skeleton, like a real skeleton key. They were a pair. Yeah. And they were attached by a little metal band. Yeah, a nice brass sort of um, yeah. ring. And then, because they also had that bar that was on there, too. Yeah. You know? And those ones... We liked them. We were going to keep. Yeah. And, you know, we were, like, thinking, okay, cool, we can take these because they're really old. We can take these little conferences and stuff like that. But the place we bought them from, we were doing, like, a little mini event. We made no money at that. No. The next time we took those things out, we brought them to... We tried to take them to Carolina Paracon. Yep. Where we were two hours late due to a terrible accident. Yep. And we forgot stuff for that whole thing. So yeah, that was pretty weird. Yeah. We pretty much have what we take these events down. Science, yeah, and we wound up leaving important things. We almost got into an accident. We were over two hours late. It was just a one thing after the other after the other. So that particular event went okay. But when we came back, we took those jail oh. keys. And what? Mr. Eric Mitchell's interview got destroyed. Oh, yep, and Eric Mitchell's, it's just kind of hard, though. Did his interview get destroyed because of the keys, or did it get destroyed because he's Eric Mitchell? That's true. Yeah, Eric Mitchell is um, a UFO abductee experiencer of sorts, and he told us that you may have problems with the interview, and he was absolutely 100% correct. Yeah. So one day we will have to get a hold of Eric when we go visit him, which was in the future, to redo that sort of thing. But we just had weird experiences. So when we came back, what did you do? You put the keys and stuff in a nice little mason jar with salt. A vintage, an antique antique mason jar. jar. Yeah. Right. Mason jar, with candy jar with salt bound and protected and set aside and put away. Because yeah. we were like, okay, the last thing that happened to us that caused this weird stuff were these keys. Yeah. So we put them up. And then that was what? Months and months and months ago. Because we were actually planning on, in February, taking a trip to a certain paranormal museum. Yeah, in I Kentucky, went, yeah. we were supposed to meet some people and, and do some interviews and do some things and talk to some very nice people, which mm-hmm. hopefully we'll still be able to do in the future. And we were going to bring those keys. To see if they could. Just to see what they thought. Yeah. And 
if you have any guidance on how to deal with these types of things, you know? Yeah. And because I looked at the keys and I looked, I was like, wow, these have been sitting in salt for months, and now the salt is all weird looking. And kind of black and, and just and kind of grubby. Yeah. And I was like, what is happening to the jailer key, the jailer key ring? I'm like, huh. So I took them out. And I was wiping them off because it looked like something was like some sort of chemical, like significant chemical reaction is happening. I just wanted to wipe them off. And I wiped them off a whole bunch, and then I showed them to you, at which point you're like, I'm still going to put this on my key ring. Yeah, so we broke the seal, broke them out, cleaned them up, and then been sitting out. Yeah. Right? And so I don't remember if that was like right before all this happened. So, fun fact, uh, I th- was originally just going to go take a shower before messing around with the van. I wasn't really going to mess around with the van. I was going to edit some video for an upcoming video that we have called uh, Road to Nowhere. Yeah. But um, I actually took the key and was key ring and was going to put it on my keys when I got distracted and decided to go out and work on the van. And then, you know, long story short, I was up on top of that ladder and I'm a careful dude. Yeah, and so I mean, I was super careful because I didn't want to fall, and I knew you know it'd be bad to fall and all that sort of thing. And it was like somebody just kicked that ladder out from it. It's like somebody just came up and just ripped it out from underneath me. So. No, but anyway, so. The keys may have had something, but it's what happened after, I think, that sort of got it for me. So what happened after we, so I'm in the hospital and all that stuff, and you're in there messing with those keys, and you sent me a text message a couple of days after I was awake and kind of moving around, and what did you say? Well, I have a full timeline. Uh, we'll do the timeline because I don't remember too much of it. February 1st, messes with the skeleton key, and both mess with the skeleton keys and the jailer's key ring. February 2nd, you broke your neck. February 4th, you're still kind of in and out of sedation, but you're bringing you out. And I get sent home, basically. You are not, you've been up for four, three days straight. You're a wreck. You go home. So I got sent home. When I went home, the skeleton keys were on a different table. That's kind of weird. Um, the jailer's key ring is on the floor in the, right in between the hallway, or the, the doorway to the studio and the living room. Hmm. On the floor. And I'm like, That's kind of strange because I didn't put it on my key ring at all. Yeah, so I was like, and that was the thing, because we talked about it later, and you didn't remember if you left it on the podcast studio table or on the living room table. Right. But yeah, so the keys, they were on the podcast studio table, which is, they're supposed to be on the living room table. And the key ring is on the floor. I'm like, well, maybe in all the commotion, maybe stuff, maybe Will were in here, maybe they're running around, you know, that's what I thought. So I picked them both up with my bare hands, and I put them on my craft table. Okay, that's February 4th. Um, I took like a shift or something lined up, and started to head towards the hospital, and February 5th, Facebook and Instagram shut down our social media accounts. Yep. Yeah. So we got hacked. And, it and they shut them down. Greg's account got hacked. But first, we got a notification that uh, copyright. Yeah, which we don't have copyright. We have all it taken care yeah. of. And yeah. Then, yeah. And then basically everything else, like from spreading some sort of bad propaganda, you know. So our, so our social media got shut down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that same day, I did go home. Right. And um, I, I touched the keys again, put them back in the salt, placed a jailer key ring next to the And then, massive flooding. Yes. Massive flooding caused all the problems with the neighbors, also flooded out the bunker. Yeah. Which is not good. And then what happened the next day? <laughs> the well stopped working. Yes, the well on our property stopped working. So I think that's about the time you called me and said, you know, there's keys and the key rings. And as soon as you said that, I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. So our thought, or my thought personally is, is that putting those keys in the salt really sort of pissed off whatever was going on. Yeah. 
like super angry because it didn't seem to do anything when you pulled them out. It was like letting something out yeah. because, you know, the well flooded. I mean, the, the bunker flooded. The well stopped working. You put gloves on. Yeah. You put the salt and you wrapped it back in there and you, you did the deal, right? You put the salt around the keys with the key ring, right? You salted it basically. Right. And then what happened? So when that happened, stuff was flying. It, it seemed like stuff was falling very hard or very fast. I don't want to say flying off of the shelves, but stuff was just falling. Yeah. Uh, and like, okay, so we have a cute little lucky bamboo plant that has a little Batman ornament on it. It deliberately fell in a weird way to break the salt circle that I had put around the jar. Yeah. And I had put the jar on a plate after I put the gloves on, put the jar on a plate, um, redid the twine, and then put the salt circle around it and put it in a far corner of our, our house. Yeah, because we were trying to figure out how we were going to get rid of it. Yeah, so the Batman ornament fell off the Lucky Bamboo plant, broke the circle. When you fix the circle, something else happened, and I heard a loud noise. Um, a, what are my Crocs? How does one of my Crocs end up from the living room to the door? I don't know. But that's why I noticed the twine was messed up, and the twine had broken the salt circle again. Hmm. So... Did the circle again. At this point, I am breaking out the sage. Yeah. I'm staging. I'm, I'm staging the way, like, my friends from the Southwest taught me. Yeah. Um, and that was like, a fish, feather, and knife fish. I, I come in, and you have broken out in a horrible allergic reaction. Yes. Huge rash all over my body. Hives. Yeah. And I was fine before. So it's just kind of a weird thing. So basically, the keys are in the jar, the, G, the key ring's back in the jar, it's resealed, it's salted again. And what, what's been happening since then? Um, nothing. Nothing. Like a complete nothing. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like... It's kind of like going from outside in traffic to a library. <laughs> nothing is happening. Yeah, but it's also kind of jarring and scary. Like, is something else going to happen? I don't think so. I will say... Um, that during all this time frame, um, and when I was all under medication and things like that, and when I was at the other hospital before being moved to this hospital, I was able to see things that I wasn't normally able to see. And I was able to actually see freaking dead people for a period in time. And I would watch this nurse come in with this older person following behind her and I would watch that older person mess around with that nurse a little bit and she would set her clipboard down and walk away and she would come back to try to get it because she would lose it she lost it like three times in a day and it was that thing every time that old man you know she'd have the clipboard and she'd talk to me a little bit because everybody at the hospital was super nice like very very nice to me she would talk and and this person would just touch the keyboard or cut touch the clipboard and she would set the clipboard down talk a little bit more and walk out and she did it like three times and the last time she came in almost in tears because she wasn't able to find the clipboard because it had all the work that she had to do in nurses or uh you know patient information all this crazy stuff and she's like you know I can't, i've lost this three times i'm like well you need to tell the old man that's walking around with you to leave you alone and she did not like that and she's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, I don't know, man. I'm just seeing things, and I'm seeing this dude. And it's, you know, and I don't know. It was a strange thing. I've seen some things, and I think a lot of it is if you're super heavily medicated and you almost died, you're probably a lot closer to that veil. Like maybe it's a whole lot more tangibly thin, more, you know, than anything before. And, you know, it's just weird, man. And when we got to the other hospital, I'd seen a couple – in our secret new undisclosed lo- location, yeah. I've seen a couple things, and I developed the ability to predict when my wife would show up, which is very nice. <laughs> so, did you know today? Yeah. Okay. I knew it just wasn't as strong. I knew you were here. Okay. That's why I wasn't shocked when you just come busting in the door all crazy. Well, I was carrying a lot of snacks. Yeah. So. so, or maybe I can just detect snacks. <laughs> I don't know. It's just been a strange thing. Um, and I had one crazy experience that we'll talk about in, uh, in another podcast. It's going to be about Reiki healing and um, um, Maybe stuff that old hag. Yeah, or stuff that happens when you sleep. 
Yeah, because this was this was super crazy and just kind of a strange thing. So anyway, what we thought we would do is just kind of give you a little bit of an update because we haven't had a podcast out in a minute, and it's been a terrible thing. Um, I think are we we're getting close to the point where we're going to need to stop because in our amazing, wonderful mobile setup we've got going on, um, our batteries are are being depleted as we speak, which is slightly unusual. But and the one thing I do want to say is you know we've had a, a huge outreach of support from our friends and family and also our friends in the paranormal community and all I can say is thank you so much and thank you for thinking about us when so many of you are you've got a lot on your own plate to think about. Yeah, very much appreciated. It's a long road to recovery. Um, we're not sure. It's not that long. I'm going to make it not that long. Hey, I can potty by myself now. You know, I'll tell you what, if you have something like this happen to you, if you have any personal hang ups about strangers just washing you and stuff like that, they're going to be out the window. What I want to say is, we're not really sure if we're going to make it to all the upcoming paranormal events. Um, we're not sure if we're going to be able to sometime in March. Yep. So that's his that's um, uh, graduation date for September March. Yep. So. That's what we're cross working is for. And he's hitting all of his benchmarks so far that I know of. Yes. So we're hoping for March, and then even still, I have to learn how to drive a Albino Lyra. Yep. And we're, we're going to take it slow, but we're not going to take it slow. Yeah, I have stuff to do. And we've got big projects that we've been doing to launch for this 2020. Yep. So, um,. Yep, we still have lots of videos to do. We have lots of things to investigate, so nothing's changed. Well, things have to be, re realistically, things have changed, but they have not changed for as worse as they could be. Um, yeah, so I won't be fighting anybody in the parking lot or the backyard for a while. <laughs> uh, so if you're listening and I owe you a, a fisticuff out in the parking lot, we'll have to pick it up at a later date. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I've had a couple of comments like that. You know. yeah, that's true. So, but yeah, it's it's. Uh, I've got a lot of good people that seem to be uh, interested in my recovery, which is nice. And uh, so far, I've met some really wonderful nurses, and the nurses they need to get paid more. And I would like to say that if the doctors are listening, even remotely listening to this podcast, which they may or may not. Um, did a good job so far. Thank you very much. Much appreciated for, you know, not having me be a vegetable, yeah. which is entirely possible or even worse deed. <laughs> so what could have been, <laughs> yeah, I could have killed the hell out of myself. Basically is what it boiled down to, but did not. So it kind of is what it is. But anyway, there you go. We thought we'd do a little bit of a podcast to kind of keep you guys updated. Cause it's been a little bit, a little bit of a, a ride for us and we've been kind of busy. And we have not been uh, shirking our responsibility, so it is what it is. But it could be a lot worse than it really is. And we do appreciate everybody that's been putting forth the good thoughts. In our next podcast, I do want to talk about my Reiki experience as a Reiki experiencer and a terrible old hag thing that happened. Yeah. Now, if so, if you have any questions or comments about the podcast, please reach out. Yes. Yes. And uh, if the audio is garbage, we apologize in advance. But if it sounds great, we meant to do that. So, anyway, thank you very much. We'll talk to you guys again. See you later. Take it easy. Bye bye. <laughs>